Hey, what's happening, guys? This is version three of Shut That Dog Up. If you don't know what Shut That Dog Up is, uh, I'm in an ongoing dispute with my neighbors, and uh, every time I come out of my house, they encourage their little dog to bark at me and my dog and my son or anybody else who's over here. So we created a circuit on a 555 timer to uh, produce a frequency of about 20 kilohertz, which is supposedly annoying to small mammals. And it, yeah, it kind of works. And I got a lot of comments from you guys about why don't do something that oscillates frequency. So I've been sitting on it, thinking about it for a while because that's how my brain works. It goes from thing to thing to thing. So now I'm back to this thing. And uh, I have an idea. So what we have here is a 556, which is basically two 555 timers in one package. We're going to take this pin, 556, okay? Or this this side of the 556. Remember, there's two separate 555 timers in here. We're going to take, uh, we'll call it timer one, and cause it to create a frequency. But we're not going to take that output. Instead, we're going to pass the trigger through this little conditioning circuit here. And we're going to take pin 11 over here, which is the control voltage pin. And we're going to take the control voltage pin here, which is held high to 9 volts, and we are going to change that control voltage pin with that little bit of circuit there. Otherwise, what we have here is a standard 555 timer. See, there's our two um, resistors and our capacitor controlling the timing. I've used all mylar capacitor. Well, I'm only using one capacitor. Mylar capacitor here just because of the values are so small. You could put another capacitor here on the output of uh, pin 6, the trigger pin, which would help to create a, uh, a, better, ace, a uh, better free running oscillator. But I found that it works like this, and any time that you can reduce components, that is a good thing. So the output comes up here from reset, interesting, and output of pin 9 to our little piezo speaker. So let me bring that out now and show you. Here is the entire circuit. I'm trouble grabbing that little tray. All right, so, whoops, I mean to bump the camera. I'm always bumping the camera. There's our five, five, six timer split down the middle, just like I said. Here's this side. There's our little conditioning circuit with the diode and the resistor in parallel. There's our 1.5K from the control voltage there. Oh, no. That's that's this one here. That's 100. What is that one? I don't remember. There's our, our 1.5K coming down there. So anyway, let me plug this thing in and show you. You're not going to hear anything. Unless uh, you have the wonderful hearing of a, of a small mammal. Because this frequency is going to be above 20 uh, kilohertz, around 22. But it's going to oscillate because we're taking that control voltage pin, that wire over here, coming from here. And what it's going to do is it is going to hit the control voltage on that, which is going to oscillate the frequency. All right. So let's power it up here. As you can see, we have 9 volts. Uh, it's pulling 7, 8 milliamps. There's the oscillation you saw. So what I'm going to do now, whoops, is mess up my camera rig. What I'm going to do now is hook up these probes to the speaker into a frequency counter. And get frustrated because it won't work. I mean, it may work. Usually when I try and show you guys something, then it never works. But it is working. So if we come over here to the frequency counter... Interesting, it's counting up. Hmm. Okay. I don't know why I was having trouble getting that frequency counter to work, but it's going pretty good. You can see the oscillations up there. 
and if we come down here and take a look here you see that the uh, the frequency is looks like it is steady at 21k but if you pay attention to the waveform here you'll notice that uh, it is changing and the space you know between the peaks and the troughs the distance that like diagonal line there that is the frequency changing and it is not a square wave because we are not remember we did not take from the output pins like there's the out there well, we did take it from the out over here but because we didn't take it from the out there and we're using the reset we're getting more of a almost like a sawtooth wave pattern which is indicative of a, a capacitor charging and discharging. So yeah, it's going bloop, 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 only much, much higher. So now I'm going to put it on, well not today. I'm gonna put it on one of these uh, Euro boards, maybe a smaller one, I mean, I'm, I don't really need that much space use one of these nice smaller ones and then we will print it out a case for it but something that can stand up uh, to the rigors of being outside so we don't want to use you know PLA or anything maybe we use some uh, ABS and I just happen to have a way to print ABS now but that's a video for another time There it is, bleeping away, getting ready to anger every neighbor dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks for you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.